G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, I'm a little bit under the weather today, uh, not feeling too flash, so this isn't going to go for too long and I'm probably not going to be my perky self, <laughs> but that's alright, let's move on. Alright, we can see we're under that $2 trillion mark and dropping a little bit. Bitcoin's back down to 56000 oh so close to getting up to sort of 62000 and we've lost a few thousand right there. And again, Bitcoin's kind of going down over the last seven days. I do think we're going to be stuck in a consolidation period for a while. That's my hunch at the moment. I think we're going to travel sideways for quite some time. Uh, you know, again, maybe until at least the IPO, which I think is uh, April 14th or something, the Coinbase IPO, then maybe things change. But look, it, it's hard to know. But at the moment, most things are kind of sort of traveling sideways. They are going up some, are, you know, particularly Binance Coin there and even Ethereum, but it's gone up and down. BTC dominance 54, Ethereum 11.8 and gas 125. And we can see there's a bit of a mixed bag here. So we got some green, particularly on the seven days, but in 24 hours in the last hour, definitely things have not done too well. So let's have a look what's pumped in the last 24 hours. Right, with well, ZRX still going. Congratulations to anyone who's on that. Engine coin, nice, been doing quite well. Harmony. Pancake Swap, Dent Yearn, Finance, Holo. So there's definitely, you know, some coins that are, yeah, they're doing all right, but there's definitely some that aren't doing all right. I mean, look at that 30%, 20%, 20%, 12%, 8%, 6%. So nice. All right. What about not done so well? Has anything really got hammered? Yes, unfortunately. Bitcoin Gold. <laughs> Who didn't see that coming? I, I did say yesterday I saw Bitcoin Gold pump. I wouldn't have touched it, but anyway, that's just me. Uh, you don't have to date it, just trade it, as they say, if that's what you're into. Helium got knocked around a bit. Ontology, NEM, EOS, Quantum, OMG, Waves, XRP even got hammered a little bit there. So, yeah, we've had a bit of a correction and obviously the weekend's coming as well. So, Thursday here in Australia, Friday uh, coming tomorrow. And that may have had something to do with it. Maybe we're now back to the dump coming sort of on the on the Thursday um, yeah, on the Thursday. It's done that before, but of recent times, it's been doing it on the Sunday. Maybe it's uh, gone back to the Thursdays now. All right. Bitcoin. We can see it's just been kind of ranging. Get rid of that. Really, we've been just been ranging for a while, but it does feel like the volatility is getting less and less. So maybe we're getting ready to make a big move up. And again, that may come at around about the 14th of April with the Coinbase IPO, so around about there. Definitely possible and basically just under a week's time, we'll have to wait and see what happens. But traveling sideways, so again, some of the altcoins are doing pretty well, Bitcoin just traveling sideways and even Ethereum staying above 2000, which is really good, but just, yeah, traveling sideways. All right, some sour grapes here. So someone is unhappy with Grayscale's Bitcoin trust. So at least one investor isn't happy with the performance of the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, which holds more than 3% of all Bitcoin in circulation. So it's putting Grayscale on blast. In an open letter to Grayscale Board of Directors published yesterday, investment firm Malton took aim at GBTC's discount uh, to net asset value, calling it abysmal despite Grayscale's attempts to bring the price back up. I mean, there's nothing they can really do about the price. It's in a ranging motion at the moment. You know, what kind of investor gets into th something and thinks it's just going up forever? That's, yeah, pretty funny. But anyway, so Martin, which says it's, uh, says it's a substantial GBTC holder and estimates the discount has lost GBTC stakeholders 3.1 billion. Even his investors are also paying a 2% management fee for the privilege. It's asking Grayscale to conduct a tender offer that would allow stakeholders to cash out at a higher price than GBTC's market value. Why would they let that happen? That just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Hold. <laughs> not financial advice, just my personal advice. Hold. That's the whole point. It's not going to go up forever. And yes, you're paying a premium for it, but that's just the way it is. If you didn't want to pay the premium for it, go and buy Bitcoin on your own. That's just silly, that article. I mean, not silly. Silly that in their thinking. It's interesting. All right. So VC-backed billion-dollar stablecoin project Fay Protocol falls below the USD peg. See, there's so many stable coins out there at the moment. I just don't think we need that many stable coins. Really, you know, USDC, Tether, 
you know, maybe some European stable coin, you know, one from each country, whatever it may be. But you don't need, you know, a ton of, yeah, USD, yeah, digital USD. Just no point. And that's why, you know, you've got to be very careful, you know, in this crypto space in general and even with stable coins, you know. I'd never even heard of this protocol until now, so there you go. SEC, so they're saying it might take two years for a Bitcoin ETF. So according to an analyst at CFRA Research, Vanak Fidelity Investments and Valkyrie Digital Assets may not see their Bitcoin exchange traded funds or ETFs approved by US regulators for up to two years. God, that's that's a while. That's Yeah, I honestly thought it would have happened at least this year sometime, but two more years, that's, yeah, disappointing, and maybe that's part of why uh, Bitcoin's just in a ranging motion at the moment. It's kind of being held down by regulations and uncertainty and things like that. That would be my guess. All right, last but not least, Kyber Network. Finally, we're getting some good news. So one of the major differences between Kyber's new platform and regular automated uh, market makers, because it's got a digital uh, market maker, and most others have uh, automated, is the fee generation system. So while platforms such as Uniswap charge a fixed a fixed trading fee of point zero, sorry, uh, zero point three percent, the new Dex will calculate fees dr- uh, dynamically, increasing during times of high volatility and demand and decreasing when markets are quiet. This encourages traders to take advantage of cheaper trading opportunities, which will improve capital efficiency for LPs and the platform. So I'm looking forward to this Kyber 3.0. Things are sounding really good. Uh, you know, Kyber hasn't performed as well as what I'd hoped. It hasn't underperformed, but yeah, it just hasn't performed as, as well as what I'd hoped. All right, that's it for me. I'm really struggling today, but I thought I'd get a little bit of a video out at least. All right, stay safe, be kind to one another. If you're on that game train at the moment, you're doing pretty well, and I'll see you next time.